Uh, I have a two-parter for you. Uh, how do you feel the team, being very young, has improved playing against the talented and experienced filled Big 12? And uh, how do you feel McGurl has worked to be a calm veteran presence for the younger players this year? I, I think, you know, there's no doubt we've improved. Uh, you know, it, 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 I'm happy it finally resulted in some wins uh, here this last couple of weeks. Um, you know, we're way better than we are. We're in November than we were in December, January, and probably, you know, early February. Each, each, they have, they've made strides. And you've got to give um, our guys some credit for staying the course, um, listening, wanting to be coached. Um, you know, and there's no doubt that it's uh, the league makes it really tough. It, it, it's not very forgiving. Um, you got not only great teams, you got great players, you got great coaches, and, uh, and lots of different styles. So it, it, every, every game is a new challenge. And, and they've, I think they've learned. They've, they've learned that you got to attack teams differently. You got to be, you always got to be ready. Um, and, and so they, they've made improvement. There's no doubt about it. Um, uh, you know, I hope it continues uh, down this, this last stretch of the season. Um, you know, all along, I, I talked about hope. Uh, I talked about, you know, staying positive. Um, you know, I, I, and now, you know, you preach that stuff and then you hope it has some uh, positive results in, at the end. Uh, with Mike McGurl, it's, it's, it's important to him. Uh, he's he's a, a special young man, uh, you know, good to graduate in the School of Business. He, he is very driven. He wants to do well. This was, you know, he had been part of an Elite Eight. He had been part of a, a, a Big 12 championship. Um, you know, he, he, but this is a different role. He's had to change his role. And, and he's embraced that, um, uh, you know, and it hasn't been, it hasn't been easy for him either. Uh, you know, but he's, he is, I'm telling you, he's been in the office as much as anyone, maybe other than Barry Brown, who came in every day. Uh, I would say Mike, three, four a week. He's in the office Sundays. He's in the office. Uh, he's been a great example. And I like what you said about uh, calmness. Um, he, he, even though he, there's times in the game, and, I, and I've talked to him a lot about it, he can't play in a panic state because um, he's not going to go and hit a grand slam when we don't have anybody on base. Uh, but I think he's learned to play as he's improved through the, through the season. He's learned to play with a better pace and, and with a better calmness, which has uh, hopefully helped him and helped our team. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce, I know maybe it's just a small thing, but would it be a big deal for you to uh, win, win on Saturday and at least show that you've made progress from where you were last year in terms of Big 12 victories going from three to four? Yeah, I'm not sure if that, you know, it's huge progress, but we just want to win because it's it, we've improved during the year and, and it gives our guys a good feeling and, 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 you know, you, you guys asked what several times along the way, you know, what do you say to the fans? Well, you know, we've, we've, we've continued, the guys have stayed the course. They've continued to work hard. They continue to believe they continue to improve. And now it's, it's finally given them some wins. Uh, you know, you, and, and you want a good feeling going into the off season. So I think that's, the, that's the most important thing. Uh, one, the guys mindsets, um, how they feel about it. You know, and again, we preach this stuff, and now you have results. So now the trust factor is better, um, and and you know, hopefully that all, uh, you know, will have a positive impact as we move forward. The Big Twelve, at least from the outset, would seem to have done you a favor scheduling this game, giving you guys a week off, and Iowa State having to play all these games. Um, how have you spent your time this week without no midweek game? Well, it, it, you know, it, 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 we had to look at it as, uh, you know, do we grind it out and wear them down or, 
or do we keep fresh and get them? And I, I think it was, we had to stay positive with them. Um, it's hard to practice late in the year, especially more than two days in a row. So we spread it out. We were off Sunday. Um, Monday, it was a lot of individual stuff, individual shooting, workout, weights, video. Tuesday, a good practice. Uh, Wednesday, just shooting cold tubs, um, you know, relaxing. Uh, and then had a, we had a really good spirited practice. Uh, it was the first day we could, we actually had 10, because Nigel was back. Uh, we actually had 10 guys that we could practice and go a little bit five on five, uh, which, which always helps and uh, ease the burden on our coaches, you know, trying to be in practice. Um, and then today's prep, um, you know, getting ready for them. We did some prep, uh, spaced it out a little bit. So today, hopefully spirited, sharp, quick practice and, you know, come out with great energy tomorrow. I, I don't know, you know, with them, they've been able to play three games since we played, finished the West Virginia game. You know, you always, you, you saw Kansas last night. Uh, I thought Bill made a great decision to play the game, but uh, while they were playing, he was probably, you know, agonizing over it. But you, you need to keep your game, game rhythm, because if you don't, um, it, it can go very fast. Yeah, and um, I also wanted to ask, it's been almost one year exactly since you guys played the game against TCU in Kansas City when it was like the end of everything. Um, just given how bizarre that game was, um, and now that we're coming up on a year, year anniversary of it, just what are your memories from, from that? Was that one of the more bizarre things you've been a part of? Yeah, it, there's no doubt. It, it you know, was, uh, it, I guess, more than anything, the unknown. Um, you know, we've all gone through it, um, you know, scary a little bit because we didn't know. Um, you were worried about the players. You were worried about the virus. You didn't know anything about it. Um, you know, they, you know, we, we thought they were going to have fans the first day. We were going to continue with no fans. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, I still remember after the game feeling pretty good. Uh, we, we ate, um, watched film, for, did a little brief scouter report. But I went back to the room about 2 a.m. And uh, they had the stuff on there about the NBA guys uh, tested positive and having the bus back to Utah from Oklahoma City. And, and I, did, I, I called a couple of our coaches and I said, I, I doubt if we play tomorrow. I really do after seeing that. And, and you know, we, we had breakfast. Uh, we had scouting report. We were in the middle of, and I got text messages from uh, Casey Scott and Gene Taylor that said they had to meet. And I, I knew right there that, uh, you know, we were probably going to be in trouble. And I, I just remember going home. Uh, just trying to comfort the guys and hey you know we got it we'll get you home uh, it's just it's just been eerie and it's it seems like it was just yesterday but it's been a year uh, so it's just a lot of lot of emotion a lot of different thoughts uh, and we and I never thought we would make it through the whole season to be honest and if we get through tomorrow obviously we played all our games uh, you know, until you get to the tournament. So, uh, you know, which is which was one of the goals to get through the season and get to the NCAA tournament so that we could continue uh, having somewhat in a normalcy, keeping the NCAA intact. Uh, it was an important goal and, and athletic departments keeping them financially stable. And, and we've been able to do that. All right. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Yeah, it's, it's still just weird that it all started with a game involving you guys. Yes, we were the last game of the year in the Big 12 last year. All right, thanks. Good luck. Uh, yep, thank you. Next question to Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach. Um, you have won two of your last three, and you have opportunities here. You, you play two teams that you've beaten. You've emphasized a lot about being positive with your team. Is this a great opportunity to continue that positivity? Because I mean, you can play. Yeah, the there's State no doubt. Uh, you know, and and um, I was happy the Big Twelve uh, scheduled the game. I, you know, I if you play Tuesday or Thursday or Saturday, I, you know, it didn't really matter. Maybe a little. You know, we had a whole week. I hope it helps us 
Um, but just, you know, making the guys feel like they've accomplished something. And uh, I talked to Dejuan last night and I said, man, you're, you know, you've made, we've made it through it. Get a smile. And he said, coach, losing's hard. And I said, but, you know, we've made improvement. We've gotten better. You've gotten, you know, we've all gotten experience and, uh, you know, make the most of the opportunity. So hopefully, hopefully that's, that's what we've been preaching. I hope it butts off tomorrow and play good basketball, feel good about going into the, uh, the TCU game in Kansas City. I'm kind of building off Kellis' question, uh, in five days you'll be back in Kansas City playing TCU. It's almost, I don't know, it's just kind of a full circle, circle moment, isn't it? Yes, it is. It, it's weird, to be honest. It's mm -hmm. weird. Uh, it, was, it was, you know, weird going through it last year. Um, you know, and, and the, you know, as I said, the unknowns and no more now, uh, but we still, there's still, you know, I don't think we're out of the, we, we got our head above water, but you know, we got to get out of the, we got to get out of the water. So it, it's still, it's going to be a little ways before, and we'll get, you know, hopefully get through the NCAA tournament, uh, which will be. It, it's important for the NCAA. It's important for college basketball. It's important for a lot of a lot of reasons. So, uh, hope hope that happens. And, and finally, I, I've noticed you've offered a couple more 2021 scholarships recently as a program. So I assume you're you're foreseeing some guys departing, which seems to be a nature of all college sports right now. Yeah, I, I, you know, it, it's uh, it's going to be interesting because even though they haven't changed the rule. Um, for the most part, I think, I don't know, 90 some percent of the kids who transferred got waivers and were eligible. So um, I, I just think everyone's got to be into the reality that uh, it's not going to be like it used to be. And where you have kids for four years, they stayed, of course, they worked their way into it. Uh, uh, you know, it, to me, it's a little sad, to be honest, because I think I, I think there's so many people forget about, you know, why are you going to college? One, to get a degree. Two, if you have the opportunity to play basketball, you know, to maybe, you know, make some money playing. But the the experiences, the the lifetime experiences, the relationships, the getting degree, the, the uh, getting a college degree, giving you a chance to be successful in life. I think we forget about that, and and that that I'll be honest, it breaks my heart. Because because um, I deal with these guys every day, and I deal with the former guys, and I deal with them um, not having purpose and direction, and you know trying to help them. And my problem, I I have guys from Purdue, I have guys from SIU, I have guys from Illinois, I have guys from K State that I'm still trying to help. And the more we see these kids transfer. It, who's going to help them? Who's going to help them? And and that that's that makes me sad. I'll be honest, because um, that's why I got into the business to you know to help young men grow, learn, uh, get college degrees. My degree gave me a chance to do things I never dreamed of. Uh, I came from a family of five. Uh, we didn't have much. We never, if we went on a vacation, it was so all seven of us and a dog in a car and we all stayed in one room. And uh, because of, because of my degree in basketball and my parents drive uh, and their dreams, uh, I've got to do things, unbelievable things. I've been in 30, I think it's 35, 36 different countries. Uh, I've been in every state except one. Um, I've, I've, I've experienced, I, you know, help, I hopefully help people. Um, and, and that's, I, I, I just, I, I don't, I don't see, I think it's, it's a bad direction, but it is what it is. And, uh, you know, now we have to, we got to deal with what, what comes in front of us and, uh, just doing our best to help those guys and help them grow and learn. And hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll figure it out. That's, that's really interesting stuff, Coach. What is the one state, by the way, that you haven't been to? Uh, Montana. 
<laughs> well, so you get your summer vacation my, plan. My wife says there's no basketball in Montana. <laughs> I love it. Montana um, State, Montana have another idea, but it's the only state. Finally, uh, transfer portal. Uh, it's I I understand your frustration with it, but uh, it, you've mentioned Scott Drew and Chris Beard. How good of general managers they are. Is that something you might explore this off season? I, I don't think there's any doubt. You know, if we need something to move forward, I think we have a good core nucleus. Uh, you know, if we could get an, another, if if the opportunity is out there to get another experienced older guy to maybe help us, uh, you know, that, that, you know, that it would, you know, but it's got to be the right person. And, uh, you know, I think it, it would help us. There's no doubt. Thanks, Coach. I, you know, even you got to give Lon credit. I always talk about Scott and, and – uh, Chris, you know, Lon, you know, Gibson and Harkless have been really valuable members for them and help give them a chance. Uh, you know, Hugs has been able to pretty much keep his nucleus. And, uh, you know, ironically, they're one of their better players leaves and they, they almost seem to got better. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's something you definitely have to consider. It's, you got to, you know, what Coach Katie, my old boss, who lasted a long time in the business. He, and I talk about it at clinics all the time. You want to stay in the business, you better be flexible. And, and you know, that's, that's coming from a guy that uh, I think if you associated with Coach Katie, you would not think of the word flexible, but he really was. He adjusted to the kids. He adjusted to the times, basketball changes. He adjusted to that. And I, I learned a lot from him. And, uh, you know, it doesn't mean you give in on your principles. Uh, you give in on your beliefs, but you do have to, you know, life changes, world changes, and basketball changes. So um, that flexible is something you definitely have to be. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Uh, we'll do one last question uh, for Coach before Mike jumps on for Jackson Snyder. Hey, Coach, uh, you, you kind of already touched on how it's it's been a weird experience having last year's last game be against TCU, and now you're probably going to be playing them again in, in just a weird environment. But how has – looking at that experience, what have you learned over this last year? Is there – if you could sum it all up into all this craziness, what what has been your biggest takeaway? Well, I think the thing I've learned is about patience. And uh, that's not always easy as a coach, as a person, uh, you know, it, it, and, we all, and we all need each other. I think that's the other thing. We all need to help each other. Um, this world is right now, we, get, we got some turmoil and um, we need to be there for each other. We need to help each other. Um, that's what I've always said my job is to help the players. Um, I hope I've helped them. I hope I've helped them grow and learn and deal with uh, tough times, and it's going to help them in the, in the long haul in, in life. And, uh, you know, it, it just along the way, it, it has, I know it's been tough on our fans, but we provided some entertainment. So, um, you know, and they, you know, they have to go through the ups and downs of that. But uh, patience and, and, you know, to me, hope and – and the need for love for everybody. I think that's, that's, that's the things I've learned through this last, I've always believed in them and it's been, always been part of my life, but I, I think it's, it's right now it's headlines and, in the, and, and it should be headlines every day that we all got to be there for each other. We all got to help and, um, you know, hope we get through these tough times and uh, Sometime in the near future, life will go back to a little bit of normal. But I hope it doesn't totally go back to normal and, and we become fat and sassy again uh, because we, you know, I think sometimes uh, we all need to be, take a deep breath, be humbled a little bit and uh, realize that, you know, life, love life, enjoy life, enjoy every day because uh, I, I've lost friends, I've lost acquaintances um, and 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 I keep telling the players you know you're getting to play college basketball high school kids didn't get to play some colleges didn't get to play you're getting to do all this stuff so appreciate it and enjoy it and make the most of the opportunity and then just finally for me um, 
looking at Iowa State tomorrow, it's kind of a weird position to be in having beaten them already once on the road when you started conference play. Um, when you're looking at them, how do you tell your guys not to overlook them? I mean, you're a different team now. They're a different team now. But how do you keep them focused and, and, you know, ready for tomorrow? And I know they got their uh, beat pretty badly last night, but even that game, you know, without Bolton, they were they were kind of right there. I was on the radio, my radio show, and I kept updating Wyatt with the score on my phone, and um, all of a sudden it went from 10 to 30, and it was like, what the heck happened? And, you know, they just kind of like us, the, the, the season, it takes a toll. Uh, but they are a better team. A week ago, they they were beating Baylor deep, at Baylor deep into the into the second half. Um, uh, they they played TCU without Bolton the whole second half, down to the wire. Um, they played, you know, got down big against Texas, uh, came back and, and made it a game. So uh, they were down to Oklahoma. They've been in every game, and we've showed the guys the scores. Um, we told them if they don't come ready to play, uh, it, it could be a sad day. I, I Again, I hope our guys feel good about themselves. I hope they're ready to go. Uh, we got to defend, and that's going to be really, really important.